Cobra Clutch, and from nowhere the Bisco came and did this to me. The last guy that did this to me, the Bisco, is pushing up daisies. You want to challenge me for this belt? You want to haunt me? Well, you got it. You got it. You're talking about war. You want a war with me? Well, you got a war. What the fuck do you mean, where am I? Welcome to a very special show. You are in the presence of the first ever Rassle Squawk. Let's oversaturate the market, folks. That's what we're here for. I am your host, Danny Danger of Rassle Squawk. This is episode one. It is Monday, May uh, 8th, in the year of our Lord, Johnny Hitmaker, 2022. Leaving comments not on the YouTubes. Son of a bitch. Where are you? Did you film this during the day? It's bright at nighttime. 7.48 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, my sir, with the lights. Oh, are you wondering about this light? Hmm? Now, I bet you're all wondering, what the fuck is this? We just finished watching three something hours of your of your motherfuck of your motherfucking ass. Um I'm gonna wax your ass like a looter in a riot. Oh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We have Hitmaker Yamazaki Enterprises Umbrella Royalty with us today. It is none other than the man who kills. He is more monster than myth, but more myth than man. He is one that but needs just two letters to instill fear in all those within his wake who have a functioning brain. Shut up with that retirement stuff. It's Retirement in professional wrestling means nothing, Mr. C. And you know what? Just for that, I want to show you something that will instill fear in even your dark, retired heart. Are you ready for it? I'll give you a moment, Mr. C, if you need it. Do you need it? Have you braced yourself? Because I'm not joking. What I'm about to show you is controversial. You're good. No, you're not. No, you're not, but... I'm, it's proof right here. I'm good. Were you? Were you? Were, are you good now? But by, by chance, just a you know crazy, crazy thought. Are you good now, Mister C? Did you see this? Did you see Mister C? I'm absolutely fucking horrifying oh then it there are no eldritch horrors that await us mr c there are no chthonian terrors to be awaiting us no lovecraftian nightmares to await us let us smell i i, I smell a, more, 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 more on the orangey side of citrus Yes, yes, yes. Very orangey indeed. I would dare say that this is straight up orangey. Well, let's give it a little, a little, um, sip. <sighs> Woo! Had like a little effervescent burn, like a like a polymerization between effervescence and heat. I activate polymerization and create the ultimate sensation. Uh, 
You know, that ain't not the, that ain't not the I have been. That's a good. I like it. It's got character. It's got character. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are uh, teleporting from the Electronic Federation world, and we are dabbling outside, but in between and within and without of kayfabe, and we will be talking about real professional wrestling events. And we have one lined up for you today. It is a cl wrestling classic. It's not WWF. It's not WCW. It's not even ECW. We're going to a, a promotion that has collaborated with some of those promotions. It is Jim Cornette's own Smoky Mountain Wrestling. Remember Smoky Mountain Wrestling? You'd always hear Jim Cornette going off about it in earlier WCW days. Oh, Smoky Mountain Wrestling! I can't really do a Jim Cornette voice. It just sounds like, Hi, I'm Jim Cornette! No, see, it's, it's just not going to ever be good. But that's okay. Not every impression can be good. Not like my great impression of At the Raven Knox. Hey, yeah. Beatrice, that's my wife over there. And she uh, has a removable beehive, as, we, as we've touched on before. And, uh, oh, I guess my door's getting kicked in because of all the guys I pissed off throughout the years have come to uh, fuck me up. It's, it's Smoky Mountain Wrestling is basically what we're getting down to. All right. And one of their main events, they're like WrestleMania, you know, they're their great uh, Starcade, you know, main event is called the Super Bowl of Wrestling. And it took place on April 8th, 1995. And that would mean that this was like... I'm not going to count. Anyway, um, I'm going to say that it goes from bottom to top and opening up the curtains. We got a cross-promotional match because we got the D'Lo Brown, who is, as we know, part of the gangsters. And he's taking on one of the Armstrong brothers. This one is uh, Brian Armstrong who some of you might know went on to become... Wait a minute. Was he Road Dog? It was Brad Armstrong. He was just Brad Armstrong in WCW. WCW's earlier cruiserweight or light heavyweight uh, divisions, right? Brad Armstrong. Uh, then there's... Uh, then there's... I don't remember any fucking other name. Brian. Yeah, no, it is. That's the Road Dog. That's the Road Dog. But he's not the Road Dog just yet. No, no, no. He's not even, he's not even the roadie just yet. This is pre roadi Probably. I don't fucking know. Who cares? Um, who, who do you think is going to win this match? You know, we have the results already. I think they've been out for um, a couple years now. We're not going to look at them, though. Uh, I'm just going to close this window. I won't uh, close this window. Close this window. And then if I go here, it shows the results but I'm just not going to look. Who do you think, just off the top of your head, you can use your true memory, you can use a guess. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your brief appearance of This Is Awesome, one of our sponsors on the uh, official UGWC Johncast. This is Wrestle Squawk, episode one. Thank you, and, and uh, feel free to check out the replay. I highly doubt this one's going to go that long. We're just talking about one wrestling promotion, for God's sake. So who do you think won between D'Lo Brown and Brian Armstrong? Who do you got? Who do you got? Who do you, who do you, who do you got in this um, bout, in this battle of, the, of, of epic proportions? We'll catch the replay. D'Lo wins! It's a vote for D'Lo of the gangsters, led by New Jack. Who do you think? 
take a wild guess. Let's see if I can multitask here. You think the the low wins? Low. I'm playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. I mean, uh, uh, Master Duel, sorry. I have to win. There's the condition for this solo thing is that uh, my opponent has a, um, a a mill deck and I have an Exodia deck. So obviously, I don't know if I if the only way to win this is via summoning Exodia, but, um, you know, what we need to do now is put this down then put this down I summon Epidia which allows me to draw a card perfect one of the cards I draw is the left leg of the forbidden one I'm one fifth of the way to victory I won't risk fighting your face down monster with my Wikipedia. I end my turn. I agree. D'Lo Brown. D'Lo Brown will win. And who, but who in fact won? Let's go take a look at the result. Uh, sorry there. This is awesome. But in fact, Brian Armstrong did defeat D'Lo Brown at the 8 minute 27 second mark. Which means he, he laid to him down at the 8 minute 20 24 second mark my epidia has been destroyed by your bastard cards oh perfect they used that blasted morphing jar to discard my hand but i went from having one piece of exodia to two i have the right arm of the forbidden one and exodia the forbidden one he has sent me closer to glory. I activate the upstart goblin. You get to heal 1,000 life points, and I get to draw a card. Perfect. I've drawn the perfect combination of cards. I activate Pot of Avarice, and then activate... I mean, uh, now I activate Pot of Avarice, and then I, before I activated the other one. Let me return my... Exodia piece back to my deck. And while I'm at it, I'll take an Impidia, Sangan, and Witch of the Black Forest as well. Oh, fuck. I can just get fucking everything. Sweet. So, uh, Brian Armstrong won with the... With the... Who knows? It doesn't say, man. Okay? It doesn't say, man. Is that alright with you? I'm out of here. See ya. This is awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, D-Generation X with Jin Exist yet proudly presents you its future tag team champion of the world, the road dog, Jesse James, the badass Billy Gunn, the new age outlaws. And if you ain't done with that, well, we've got two words for you. I will not disclose them to you at this time. I summon the Witch of the Black Forest. And guess what? Than any of your two pathetic... I think I'm going to attack your morphing jaw. Um, so next we have... Um, it's a tag team match where Chris Michaels and Flash Flanagan will be taking on a tag team that... You, some might f be familiar with none other than Mosh and Thrasher, the Headbangers. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Before the WWF, it is. They were in Smoky Mountain Wrestle. Isn't that interesting? I'll place this card face down. And then I will summon Sangon. Last, none of my monsters are strong enough to penetrate his, their, his defenses. I'm going to have to hope that my life points can hold out from this barrage that's forthcoming as a result. Uh... 
I have no choice but to end my turn. So uh, who do you guys think is going to win? Is it going to be the unlikely team of Chris Michaels and Flash Flanagan? Or shall it be the future WWF headbangers? Leave your comments down below. Cyclops, Wolverine, and the Nightcrawler went to a bar, and yo, they had dollars. Um, hmm. This motherfucker, I guess. Oh, just basically. Irrevolent. More hits from the bong. More hits from the bong. Smoke from a slong. You can't go wrong. Ding, ding, da, dong. Okay, so what are you saying? Was this before or after they were the flying nuns? Uh, well, okay, so I think that the 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 event timeline is, is that they were the headbangers in Smoky Mountain Wrestling. And then when they went to the WWF, they were not the the smoke the headbangers yet. They were the flying nuns on Shotgun Saturday or some uh, in in its original incarnation, something like that. And then that lasted very briefly. And then, uh, fucking, they uh, I've literally never heard of Michaels and Flanagan. So I'm gonna go. I've heard of the name Flash Flanagan before, for sure. Uh, you know, I, I, I too would also <laughs> wager that uh, that the headbangers won that won that one. <laughs> now that my shard of greed has two tokens on it. I can send it to the graveyard to draw two cards. And from those, I shall activate the spell card Dark World Dealings. Each of us can draw a card, but must then discard one. No problem for me. And then once more, Dark World Dealings. I draw a card, you draw a card, then we each discard one. I will discard this one. Next, I will place one card face down. And I shall end my turn. But let's see who really won. Who won that night? It was... At the 11 minute, 38 second mark, yes, the headbangers did indeed take on that plucky young uh, blue chippers and uh, young lions of professional wrestling. I should go on, shouldn't I? Uh, next, we have a United States Wrestling Alliance tag team match. That's right, interpromotional, as always, with the Smoky Mountain Wrestling was the hub at the time. If you think about it, they were associating with WCW, WWF, USWA, and USWA was associating with WWF as well. It's a wondrous thing. Very, very interesting. What do you think, guys? Who do you think? Okay, so the current champions uh, are PG thirteen members of. I don't know if this is at the if they were at the Nation of Domination just yet, but um, they are JC Ice and Wolfie D. But they have their work cut out for them. Oh, and they're managed by uh, Randy Hales in this fucking encounter. 
and they'll be taking on uh, Curtis Thompson and Jackie Fulton. Who do you guys got? Who do you guys goddamn got? Will the champs retain? Okay, so anyway, um, you know, I'm gonna say I'm gonna be controversial. I'm gonna say Curtis and Jackie uh, sneak a win, a shocking, a shocking win, an upset win, perhaps even. Many may dare say. Believe it or not, try, this is not an intelligent thing to be multitask, trying to multitask here. Playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel and trying to do this. Jim Ross is like, I can't believe that son of a bitch! I'm gonna fucking shoot him! Come find me, Jim. Are you even allowed to come to Canada? I got some combos from this store as well as you know that American Goods Mountain Dew, the hot... So I think we can all agree that a pizza. Oh, that just dried the motherfucker out of my mouth. Okay, what do you fucking guys think? Come on. Okay, fuck. All right, you ass. I, um, so that's what I say. But let's see if I my my thing went. No, surprisingly enough, the champs did retain against at the thirteen minutes seven second mark, folks. I'm sure no one on earth is surprised. Next, we have a singles match where the Punisher takes on. Bullet Barb Armstrong, the patriarch of the Armstrong wrestling legacy household, family, whatever. I'm pretty sure that he's just going to beat the shit out of that guy, because even in 1995, he was an old-ass man, so. Uh, you know, I mean, not that I'm saying that he wouldn't get, you know, he wouldn't be giving those old man hand chops, knife edge chops. Yeah, I can feel the cosmos. It is within us all. So yeah, I think I think that's a foregone conclusion. You know, it's gonna it's a super underdog thing. But uh, sorry, believe it or not, Bullet Bob not gonna be shooting off anything but blanks. This is like Cocoa Pebbles bar. I thought it was actually gonna be like a. Rice Krispie Square, but with Cocoa Pebbles. And I was looking forward to that. I've been duped, you son of a bitch. It's just like fucking chocolate. All right, let's see. Wow. It took only three minutes and 38 seconds to put away that old man. As far as I'm concerned, that's too, too long. Then the MTW heavyweight title match. 
why the hell um, would um, what the hell is the MTW title? Anyone know? Come on, wrestling nerds. I'm putting you on the spot. Do you or do you not know what MTW? And don't look it up too, because that's cheating, son of a bitch. Can you hold on a sec, my God? Okay, this is just agony. Can someone just... The M Let's see if I can click that link. Ah. Uh. The MTW heavyweight, oh, the Midwest Territorial Wrestling. So what the fuck? Was that just some other wrestling promotion? Who's world champion? Yeah, I guess it had to be because their world champion is, and you're not going to believe this, folks, but believe it. It is, no, what I, whatever I said it was, Mountain, what did I say? Oh, God damn it. But anyway, their champion is Marty Jannetty. Now, on the surface, that does sound very comical, and we all have a nice laugh. But remember, Marty Jannetty was the more talented of the two. Like, so if you regard Shawn Michaels' talent skill as this high, just imagine if Marty Jannetty had kept himself clean, he, it would have just been like them going back and forth, back and forth. Like, it would have been amazing. Could you imagine just an alternate reality where Marty Jannetty wasn't a fucking goof? Anyway, he will have his, certainly have his time, uh, his uh, work cut out for him because Challenging, who's been eyeing that title for quite some time now, I guess, um, it will be none other than the bizarre Al Snow. Who do you think is going to come out on top, folks? Do you think the champ's going to retain? Do you think Marty Jannetty, the rocker, is going to hold clutch back that title from even the hands of the strange Al Snow? Would you bet your life on that question? <laughs> I just see that Jib Cornette face. That's the fucking thumbnail. Um, so who do we think? Uh, you know what? I'm not going to be a f made a fool of anymore. It's Marty Jannetty is going to retain. Al Snow is a small fry trying to be a big fry. Getting there, not quite there yet. Mountain Dew time, yeah. So let's take a look. I can't believe it. Oh my God, I can't believe it. Al Snow did defeat Marty Jannetty. He is the new MTW MTW heavyweight, Midwest Territorial Wrestling World Heavyweight Champion. And he can't believe it, folks. His eyes are wide. Um, next, we have the NWA World Heavyweight title match. 
when Dan the Beast Severn, a seemingly unstoppable champion, takes on the challenge of Bobby Blaze. If that that is either a a, a real life jobber name or an e fetter wrestler name, who is like the world champion of like all the jabroni fans on MSN groups. <sighs> Folks, are we having a good Monday night, Monday evening? It's 8.17. We having fun tonight? I guess most of you worked today. Got to be up working tomorrow. Well, that's just a call of darn ding dang shame. Because I don't. What an amazing, wow. I feel like a born-again Christian. If you look on my YouTube channel somewhere under the uh, ASW, which is the All-Star Wrestling um, videos I was taking back about, I don't know, 10 years back, one of them does have a Dan the Beast Severn match. I don't, I think he was facing a gorgeous Michelle Star. I can't quite recall exactly if that was so. But yeah, you can check it out for sure. It's on my channel. I mean, yeah, Spooky Helder Channel. Um, I know there's no chance in hell that a fucking Bobby Blaze beat Dan the Beast Severn. Not just a cute little nickname, all right? I'm, I'm just confident that, like, the... The, you know, they did not feel confident in putting the fate of the North American Wrestling Alliance in the hands of Bobby Blaze. Yeah, in four minutes, four seconds. Just fucking painted the fucking Matt Red with that guy's face. <clears throat> Pardon me. If any of you even thought about voting for Bobby Blaze, you better have a darn good explanation up your hands, sleeves. Next, we have another uh, tag team match, and it is Boo Bradley, who would go on later to become Balls Mahoney in Extreme Championship Wrestling. He'll be taking on the Mongolian Stomper. And the Mongolian Stomper, I thought was a Canadian wrestler called... Well, let's just take a look. Um... Whipper Billy Watson was it? No. Oh no, Stomper Archie Gouldy. And he's a he's a Canadian. Uh, he was trained he was trained by Stu Hart and all that stuff. He's uh he's from Carbon, Alberta, Canada. You want to know how like monomaniacal people are in Alberta, like in Texas? There's a place called Carbon. Anyway, he's a legendary Canadian wrestler. In this oh, and, and he's not Mongolian. He's white. It's funny. He, you know what? If we if we look at all the Mongolian wrestlers in professional wrestling, I can think of three. Maybe you guys can think of more, but I can think of three right at the top. We have uh we have um we have uh, Killer Khan, we have the Mongolian Stomper, and we have the Mongolian Mauler. None of which are a Mongolian, because the Mongolian Mauler, I, I'm sorry, uh, uh the Killer Khan is Japanese. For real. And uh, the Mongolian Stomper is Canadian. And the Mongolian Mahler, uh, to the best of my recollection, is American. A white, a white, a white American, a white Canadian. A not even, not Asian in any, like, in any, like, you know, uh, uh, what's his name? John, John Wayne playing Ku uh, Genghis Khan. Is is more believable than than this, okay? But they are taking on the team called the Militia, and they are NWA Classics: Terry Bam Bam Gordy and Tommy Wildfire Rich. Now, who do you think is going to win in this match? This is going to be just a wild, godforsaken fucking time here, folks. There will be no gods this evening. There will be no escape. Yeah. 
keep your eyes on the prize. Um, let me, this is a tough one, honestly. Um, I think knowing that's a Jim Cornette promotion, I really doubt he's going to be super keen on doing those, um, whole, uh, double disqualification type deals or just like total blowout or whatever you want to call them. But uh, I think if this is, if, if any match on this card would be it, would promise to be it, it's this one by far, folks. What do you think? What do you think? You Oh, you think Gordy and Rich win? Well, I think it's going to be a double DQ. You think it's Gordy and the, the militia? Let's take a look. You're right. In a almost 11 minute straight match, they did defeat the militia did did come out on top. Very good. And next for the United States Wrestling Association heavyweight title. The current champion, Billy Jack Haynes, master of the full Nelson, will be taking on yet another of the Armstrong legacy, it is none other than Brad Armstrong, the curly mulleted former WC multi-time WCW light heavyweight champion. Who's going to come out on top? Who's going to come out on the bottom? I demand answers. I demand. Let me just put the Witch of the Black Forest into defense mode. And then we shall end our turn. Quite frankly, I got Billy Jack. Like, no, you know, you know, you can't cut Brad Armstrong short. Cut him short. You can't sell him short. Sell him short. He is an incredible athlete. But Billy Jack Haynes is still in his prime, and you have to understand that there is no way. Billy Jack, that's fucking right. That's right, JC. Now let's take a look at the results. No! Oh, no! JC, we was wrong. Brain Armstrong defeated him. Nine minutes and 38 seconds. He is the new USWA World Heavyweight champ Champion. Is he even a World Heavyweight? I think there's a lot of fucking bullshit going on here. Some suspicion and activity. What do you think? Mother... We were we was wrong, Joe J. Lee, J. 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 Lee. Oh my God! I need one more piece of Exodia. I need one more piece of Exodia, and then I will obliterate you, and I will have my revenge. I'm so close. Don't you understand? Your end draws nigh. <laughs> I will place one monster face down. You will soon learn that when you choose violence. Okay, so anyway, um, And it is Obelix. Look, it's you, Mom. Get to the ships. There are only chance. Mm. 
Your time has come to an end. I can feel it in my bones. There will soon be nothing. Nothing. What? Ah, oh, I got decked out. This is twice, bro. This is twice, bro. I'm so sad, man. Okay. Unibomb, and w as always, led to the ring by Al Snow, who we s would have seen earlier on in the show, winning the MTW heavyweight title. And Unibomb will be taking on, and this might... That's right, JC. It is The Undertaker with Paul Bearer. Um, going to tell you something. I don't think that they would have agreed to use The Undertaker if they were, if he'd be jobbing to some generic, uh, some ge general no, uh, no unknown named Unabomb. Well, I would, I would fucking pop if I saw Unabomb beat Undertaker at the Super Bowl of wrestling. I would. Oh, yes, I would. I dare you to say no. Okay? So who do you got? Who do you got, muchacho? Who do you got, puta, puta madre? I'm going to take the fool's the fool's pick knowing better and I just finished explaining it to you why the undertaker is going to win but I'm going to pick Unibomb well oh by the way the Al Snow match was like fucking 28 minutes 35 seconds it was the former Leaf Cassidy taking on Marty Jannetty and beating him. But yeah, um, big shock. The Undertaker <laughs> beats Unibon. <laughs> it was an all or nothing bet. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have the Smoky Mountain Wrestling Tag Team titles on the line. The current champions, the Thugs, comprised of the Dirty White Boy and Tracy Smothers. Tracy Smotherfucker. Taking on the Heavenly Bodies, Jimmy Del Rey and Tom Pritchard, or as I like to call him, Jimmy Del Rapist, because he's a fucking piece of shit. So naturally, just by virtue of that alone, I think Champ's going to retain. Did you ever wonder, like, why the fuck Tom Pritchard, god damn it, man, like, was he tweaking? He would come to the ring just chewing that fucking gum and, like, just constantly, like, fucking, like, you know, flicking his hair. That just fucking drove me just out, just, oh, my God, just insane, okay? I don't understand why he would do that. Does anyone know? I don't know. I simply do not know. Um, so I think Champ's going to retain unless some dirty underhanded tactics happen. Cornette loved him some heavenly bodies, so I think they win. Well, then that would be like some sort of nepotism. I don't think Jim Cornette would ever do anything of the sort. Let's take a look at the results, shall we? Got some bad news, folks. Um, the Heavenly Bodies did win. They did upend the champions, the thugs, the new SMW Tag Team 
champions are, the heavenly bodies. Thanks, Jim Cornette. What a great, what a great, what a great guy you are to have done that, prick. And finally, in the main event, we have, and brace yourself for this, we've had USWA matches, we've had Smoky Mountain matches, we've had MTW matches, and now we have a WWF match. It is for the Intercontinental title, and the current champion at this time is, you guessed it, it's... The Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels, taking on Jim Cornette's client by the name of Nature Boy Buddy Landell. The man with a head that is two heads tall, if you look at him. Shawn Michaels, Buddy Landell has been uh, in the WWF for a while now at this point. Winning a bunch of matches here and there. His finishing move was a running elbow drop. Like Abdul the Butcher style. I mean, is that going to really be enough to take on the sexy boy? The boy toy? The sexy boy? The boy toy? That's how the song goes. Well, I mean, there's more to it than that, but could I have to think that again? They're not WWE is not WF is not putting out talent to just go job there. I'm just just a wild guess. You know, I mean, could it be like a disqualification type win to at least make the heel look strong? I'm a hundred percent sure Buddy Landell was never IC champ. <laughs> oh yeah that's right the title's on the line we <laughs> well i guess just uh an instant glance at history would uh be enough of a fired synapse to uh come to that conclusion but you know what i'd still feel really comfortable if we just checked what the results here say okay At the 13 minute, 44 second mark, uh, yeah, Shawn Michaels does in, in fact just barely, so barely retain the Intercontinental Champion. And he was doing those leg stretch, like flexing things where he's like stretching his leg and so he can like show you his package. He's a dick. What an asshole. I, I hope he, I was wishing Buddy Landell would win. And then they would just like start just breaking up, breaking the, the, the belt up into pieces and say, we don't give a shit about this stupid piece of fuck belt. Fuck it and its legacy. Get the fuck out. We're never dealing with you again. And then this man would be like, oh, you gonna have to buy me a new title, pal. Hmm. Right? <laughs> well, well, that's it. WWF has a 100% victory rate. How predictable. You know what? If they were wanted to be good sports, they should have like had some of their guys come more of their guys come in and, and job. And not like job guys either. I mean like real ass. You know, real ass fucking guys. Let's see if I can if my Iperia is strong enough to take down this face down monster. Oh no. I have activated his trap. All my cards, including a piece of Exodia, have been sent to the graveyard. But two more pieces are now in my hand. Oh yeah, let me end, and let me do this. I shall play the shard of greed, and then the upstart goblin to draw one card. You stupid asshole. And then I end my turn. Um, if Buddy Landell was the Intercontinental Champion, what do you think would the landscape of wrestling look like today? Let's just think about it. Shawn Michaels would have had a fit. Vince McMahon would have been, he would have been caught like, there's one time, 
and Shawn Michaels was arguing uh, about to uh, argue with Vince, and Vince was in a super bad mood, and Shawn didn't. He changed his mind. And in the landscape of that, if he did not change his mind, this tag is hard feeling. So in a world where Vince McMahon just said, that's it, you're, get out, get out. I'm tired of you. And Shawn Michaels was like, I'm out of here. And then he would go on to WCW. And there he would wrestle as Shawn Michaels. And he would be feuding with Shane Douglas. That, no. That's wrong. What a false statement. Kind of devil. <sighs> okay, we're done. That's it. We don't, this was this was in the entire card. I remember watching an interview with uh, PG thirteen, like a like a shoot interview, and. Uh, uh, J.C. Ice, who is um, Jamie Dundee, the son of uh, superstar Bill Dundee, uh, called The Rock from the because they were talking about their times the Nation of Domination, called The Rock the N word, and I'm just like, what the fuck? And I don't mean like a the A one. It was the E R one. Not that either of them would be acceptable for him to say. I'm just saying in a relative state. So anyway, that guy is a fuckhead. Um, the Jimmy Del Rey did some fucking fucked up shit. Um, he's a fuckhead. Unibom became Kane. Glenn Jacobs, who's kind of a, a dummy nowadays. So fuck him. Shawn Michaels, just fuck him in general. Uh, he, he's just a human polyp. He's the least, he's the fakest fucking Christian on earth. Did you, how can you say, oh, I don't want to do a heel turn. I'm a Christian. Are you fucking stupid? And then they, and then they just, they just let him. And I'm like, oh, wow. Great. What what perfect logic? I commend thee, Crick. Oh fucking shit! I goofed. All right, folks. I summon Sangon. And then I end my turn. Let's not make this an hour. Please, my God. I don't know if this is a success or not. Thank you very much, at least, JC. This is awesome, very briefly here. Uh, I think that's it. Um, if, uh, anyone has, uh, if, it, if anyone has any suggestions for uh, classic wrestling uh, pay-per-views or just wrestling shows in general that many part one particular one you want me to speak about uh you know feel free to let me know on twitter at uh whatever the fuck and be sure to tip your waiter get the fuck off my thing i'm gonna go i'm gonna go eat like a monster eat like i don't think it's a good idea to eat so with that being said this has been rassle squawk this has been danny danger and we're gonna
Ring that bell.